There are several challenges which need to be addressed when performing an MRI-guided breast procedure. First, you will not uncommonly be dealing with small lesions as larger abnormalities are most optimally dealt with by an ultrasound-guided procedure. Unlike with an ultrasound-guided biopsy, you do not have the real-time visualization of the needle and the lesion when positioning the needle. Additionally, evaluation of the accuracy of needle positioning relative to a small lesion can be difficult due to hemorrhage or edema occurring along the needle tract. You will also, unlike with stereotactic biopsy, obviously not have a specimen that can be imaged to confirm resection. As you can see illustrated in this animation, when planning a biopsy of a very small lesion, targeting the lesion itself or immediately adjacent to the lesion can be problematic. As the trocar passes the lesion, there is often a surrounding halo of edema or hemorrhage. This in turn can obscure the lesion in question. You no longer know where the lesion is relative to your biopsy port. This could require performing multiple cores in a full 360 degree arc in order to assure sampling. We have found that targeting next to a lesion instead of directly targeting a small lesion can be beneficial, allowing you to still visualize a small abnormality relative to the needle. Here in this animation, you can see how targeting a small distance away, maybe five millimeters or so, you can avoid this problem. The surrounding halo of hemorrhage no longer obscures the lesion. We also feel strongly that an MRI-guided biopsy should only be performed with a vacuum biopsy device. We were not willing to perform biopsies until MRI-compatible vacuum biopsy systems became available. The larger volume of tissue removed using a vacuum biopsy device can reduce sampling error in these patients. Then given needle positioning near a lesion, you can have a greater assurance of adequate tissue resection. So what are features to consider when evaluating a vacuum biopsy device? Be sure that the device is compatible with the rest of your system, especially your breast coil. Next, demo the biopsy system on a phantom or a slab of beef and see which you find easiest to use. They each have different design features that you will undoubtedly find more or less appealing. Be sure to evaluate the cutting edge of the trocar. This can be very important as you are trying often to pass the trocar into dense breast tissue, which will be only moderately compressed in order not to eliminate regions of subtle, suspicious enhancement. Evaluate the methods used for tissue sampling. How easy is the method for determining the direction of the biopsy sampling? As illustrated in this animation, you want to be accurate as you direct the biopsy aperture towards a small lesion. How does the device deal with obtaining multiple cores? This can be beneficial when sampling small foci of asymmetric regional enhancement suspicious for in situ cancer. As shown in this animation, often with DCIS, you will want to position your biopsy device centrally within a non-mass-like region of abnormal enhancement. Then proceed with multiple biopsies circumferentially within this volume of tissue. A device that can perform this quickly and accurately can be beneficial. Lastly, evaluate how each system manages hemorrhage. In our next section, you will find more detailed information on a number of MRI-compatible vacuum biopsy devices currently on the market.